Hello, I'm Dale Mason, Master Trainer with V.J. Mortensen Company. Before working with Mortensen Math, I was a classroom teacher. And like you, when I first saw Mortensen Math, I was thrilled with the possibilities. I was so excited to see a way that children could see mathematics. They could handle it and touch it and understand. I could see how children who did not understand mathematics could come to a new understanding and how the other children starting out with Mortensen Math would never fear mathematics and would always see it as fun, exciting, and something that they could discover and enjoy. Let's take a few moments and look at the materials in your Math Mastery Starter Collection. At the bottom, you will find your top tray. This tray has nine each of the unit bars, one through nine. It also has 10 of the 10 bars and 100 square. And I'm showing it to you first because we always start working with the manipulatives first. You will find smiley face books. These can be easily identified by the smiley face on the front. There are five different areas for smiley face. Counting, which is your place value, addition in brown, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You have the first four books in this series. You also have 10 each of Addition Facts Mastery and Multiplication Facts Mastery. There are 10 Level 1 Algebra books. Now you may think that's strange, but even young children enjoy starting out with algebra. To help you working in these books, we have the video as well as our Series A manuals. There are six included in your kit. There's games and activities, a good one to start with, then addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, which will give you ideas as you work in the smiley face books, and one on algebraic operations. In addition, you have the Level 1 Teacher's Manual, which is coded to our Level 1 books. Now you have the algebra for Level 1, and so you will be working in that strand in this manual, and you can look ahead and see what will be coming up in the other expansion kits. And obviously, you've already found your Getting Started video. Before we start working with the manipulatives, I want to discuss a few basic ideas that are underlying principles for Mortensen Math. I want you to take a moment and think about thinking. What does that involve? It involves imagining. It involves visualizing. Take some time and look up the definition of thinking. One definition I found was visualizing possibilities. Visualizing, imagining. What do we need to be able to do that? We need experience and we need to have seen things, right? Mortensen Math is so visual, and it provides children with lots of experiences in math. Another important thing to think about is how do children learn language? Well, they're born, they come into the world, and people are talking all around them. They are in a language-rich environment. They hear words. They try to say those words. And if they don't say it right, what do we do as adults do? We say it correctly for them. And how do they learn to speak in sentences? Do we teach them grammar before they're five years old? No. What we do is we just talk normally. And they pick up sentence structure. Before they know what a noun or a verb is, they're using them. Why? How do they do that? All children around the world are born with a natural problem-solving ability. And it's with this problem-solving ability that they pick up patterns in languages. Whether it's English or Spanish or French or Japanese, they pick up those patterns. And that's why it makes it so easy for children to learn languages at an early age. They hear things and then they have a sense of what is right, what sounds right but they have that natural ability to discover those patterns. 
from being in a language-rich environment. We want mathematics to be the same way. We want to give them the tools and to make it intellectually exciting for them so that they can discover the beauty and the patterns of mathematics. Now you have all these materials in front of you. Let's talk about how you're going to start with children of different ages. With four to seven year olds, you will probably start them out working in the smiley face books, then doing some problems in algebra and addition facts mastery, and saving the multiplication facts mastery until later. With eight to 10 year olds, you have a choice. You can start them in algebra or smiley face or addition or multiplication facts mastery because they've already been exposed to a lot of mathematics. The children 11 years old and up you may want to start them out in the algebra or multiplication facts mastery. Then go back and work with a smiley face because algebra is just generalized arithmetic. And once they've gotten this boost by working in algebra and they've done a few books, then it's going to be fun for them to see the specific case of how they can use these same materials to make arithmetic fun. going to assume in this video that children already know how to count. How many? One. How many do I have in my hand this time? One again. And this time, it's also one. Now, pick up this bar. How many do you have in your hand? It's one. And here, if a young child is looking at this from a distance, what are they automatically going to say? One. And they may not even be looking at it from a distance. But they're all one. There is something different. They're different kinds. And they have different names. Just as this has a name that's different from this. Well, let's name these. This is a unit, this is a 10, this is a 100. Now, we have just started what we call the three-period lesson. The first part, this is, is where we identify it for the child. You know, you've done the three-period lesson before. When you taught your children parts of the body, certainly you identified it for them first. And what was the next thing that you did? The next thing was you had them point to the parts of the body, right? That's our show me phase. So we would say, with these in front of the child, hold up a 10. Point to a unit. Hold 100 by your ear. You see, there are all sorts of crazy fun things that we can do that make the three-period lesson a little more interesting and exciting. But you know, when children are first learning things, it's exciting in itself. In a written format, this is, is where we have a picture and a label. The show me is where they might match an item to a name or pick it out, a multiple choice type setting. The smiley face books are really done in a show me format. And the last part is what is this? This is where the child has heard the name in the this is and the show me parts of the lesson. Now the child has had an opportunity to internalize that and now the child is asked to give the name. What is this? 100. What is this? Unit. What is this? 10. If the child has any trouble at any part, what are you going to do? You just go back to the part before it. So if when you said, show me 10, the child pointed to this, you would say, this is a unit, this is 10, this is 100. Real simple. 
very easy. The same thing that they've been used to you're doing when they're learning. They're not dumb because they couldn't do that. They just hadn't had enough chance to hear those words and have them become familiar to them. I want you to get out some materials just as I have. And if you don't have those materials in front of you, you need to pause the camera and go get them. Remember, math is not a spectator sport, and you're going to learn far more by working with a manipulatist yourself. In the video, I'm going to model some ways that you might be working with children, as well as teaching you some ideas for working with children and important verbalizations, and also teach you to work with them. Because if you, like I, went to school and had not worked with manipulatives, this is different for you. And you need the experience as well. With the materials in front of you, pick up two. Some of you may have picked up these. Some other people may have picked up these. Or you might imagine that a child might pick up these. Well, how can I get you to pick up what I want? You need to know what kind, right? Pick up two of the units kind. Very easy now. Pick up two of the tens kind. Right here. Pick up one of the hundreds kind. Here. Three of the tens kind. Here. And you see some ways that you can start working with older children in doing this type of problems. Now, let's clear this off and focus on these. You're working with a very young child at this point. Now, we're assuming that the child can count from one to nine. We need to make sure that the child is good at identifying this is one, this is two, this is three. You can do all sorts of things with that. You might have a pile of these in one place in your home or in your classroom and ask the child to go get one or two or three units or five units or eight units, just checking. They're going to have a good time doing that and showing you. You can do little fast races to see how fast they can gather those up and that type of thing as well. Now. They've done that. Suppose you're working with a young child who does not yet know their numerals. We're going to do exactly the same thing in identifying the numerals that we did in identifying our unit 10 and 100. We need to do a three-period lesson. I'm going to model this with just three cards, but of course you would start out with more than that. This is a one, this is a two, this is a three. Hold up two. Point to three. Point to one. You see, the child has heard those words. They're very familiar. Now they're learning those symbols. The next thing you may want to do is match those with the bars. So can you show me one bar? Can you show me two units? Three units, and the child is doing that. Another fun thing to do is to show them the card or hand them the card, let them go get those blocks, bring them to you. After doing that a few times where they took the card with them, then just show them the card and let them go get it. This develops their visual memory. Before, when we told them it helped develop their auditory memory, Showing it to them, then letting them go get it, develops their visual memory. Now that they've done that and had fun counting the blocks and that sort of thing, it's time to work in smiley face counting book one. Get out your book, that's the blue one, and let's look at the first page. You see here that the child just needs to count. They see that it's three, and where there is a three, a smiley face has been drawn. 
And if the child wants, they can put frownies where it was not the right response. And the next one, the child can count and see that it's five. Where is the numeral for five? It's right here. And that's just barely written in so the child can trace over that and make us smiley. Next, we have one that the child must fill out on their own. Two, two. Let me point out that each of these books is 20 or 21 pages long. It's not going to take a child very long to finish that, is it? It may take the young children a day or two. The older ones, it may take just a few minutes. But it's been good practice for them. Now, if you're working with some 9, 11-year-olds, you may just have them go through a page or two and do some problems verbally. That's fine. Because our goal is for them to get the concept and understand that those are units. Now, let's move on. How many do I have? One, two, three, four. But what kind is that? It's the tens kind, and I need a way of showing that. We put this zero here. Four with a zero tells us we have four. This tells us it's the tens kind. And we're going to refer to this as four tens. Later, after the child understands that, when they see that, we'll go through and we'll give them some new names. We could also call this 40. We could also call 5 tens 50. And you know what? They've heard those words before. They've used those words before. So now all they're doing is attaching a lot of meaning to some words that were just words that they could say probably in sequence. Now they have meaning. Now we're looking at Smiley Face Counting, book two. What does the child need to do? First of all, they need to understand that these represent 10 bars. And then they just count one, two, three. Three tens. This one is the way we write three tens, and we see a smiley face. The next problem, one, two, two tens. We write two tens this way, and the smiley face is partially filled in for the student. Now, the next problem they do on their own. One, two, three, four tens, and it's right here. The child fills in the smiley face. Again, we can see how easy it is for the child to be successful. Now, let's add a little variety. Suppose that you had two chocolate chip cookies and your friend had three chocolate chip cookies and you decided to put them all together to save them to have after supper. What have we got? Here's a problem where we're identifying the two that we have and the three that our friend has. And let's look at this in our Smiley Face edition. This is book one. This is the one with the brown cover. And here is this problem where I have two and my friend has three. And I'm just identifying this problem. Here it is, two plus three. Actually, I'm just practicing counting. And if you want, you can extend this book beyond just identifying the problem to well, how many would we have if we put it all together? It would be five. For the younger children, you just do that out loud. For older ones, you might want to have them write it. So you get a double use out of these particular books. Notice that I built this problem, or uh, that's what I'm going to do first, or if I'm working with the child after they've seen it, then I'm going to say, will you get out this many? So down here, what are they going to do? They're going to get out this many. And they're just offset to make it easier to count. And they're also going to get out this many. How many do we have here? Five. And we're going to put with that two. Here it is. Maybe my friend had five marbles, 
and I had two. And this is a picture of what we're going to do in the problem. We have a saying in Mortensen Math that what is the question is more important than what is the answer. Think about it. If you don't understand the question, how could you possibly figure out the answer? Sure, it's possible, but it's not very likely. The smiley face books are really directed toward this. You will see this in the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But as you proceed onward in these books, you will see that they do much, much more than that. But they do start the child out by identifying what is the question. I have a baseball card collection. Now, I just started collecting baseball cards, and I have eight baseball cards. But you know what? I traded with a friend. I traded some of my baseball cards for some of his stamp collection. I need to give him three of my baseball cards. So these are the three I'm going to give him. And we can see that we have five left. Now, in Mortensen Math, we have two ways that we can show subtraction. One is that we can show that we have eight right here. But we have to give our friend three, because we owe our friend three for that trade with the stamps, right? So I can remove them. The other way I can show this, let me grab that runaway block, is by turning the blocks over. We use this side that's hollow to represent O. So this is what I have. This is what I owe. And I can write, we have eight, we owe three. And what does that mean? Well, these are the three that are going to be taken away, right? Those three will be taken away. It's very clear that we have five remaining. Let's take a moment and look at one of the smiley face subtraction books. Remember, subtraction books are yellow. And we can do the same sorts of things here that we did with the addition books. We can start out by having the child build a problem. Here, we have this many, and we owe this many. Here it's shaded to show that it's what's owed, and here it's hollow. Well, let's see, we have three, and we owe two. This is the one with the smiley face. Let's build the bottom one. We have this many, and we owe this many. We have five, we owe one, and here it is. Now, sometimes children get tired of handling all these individual little blocks. So they may do something different. Let's look at page two. On page two, instead of grabbing those four separate blocks, they may start to pick these up. And that's OK. When they're ready to start using them, let's let them use them. So here we have four. We owe one. That's this one. And they draw their smiley face. I hope you can see how this program works together. They start out by counting. Think for a minute about a young child, a five-year-old. If you were to ask a five-year-old, what is math, what would they say? They'd probably say numbers, right? And they're fascinated by numbers. And what do you do with numbers? You count them, right? We define, Morton's, we define math as just counting in Mortensen. Why do we do this? Because if we make math something very basic, something that children can really understand, they have no fear of it. And they go on to discover the power, the logic, the beauty, and the pattern of mathematics. Let me give you an example. Here's another topic. Think of geometry. 
How can we define geometry as counting? Well, what shape is this? It's a square. How do you know it's a square? One, two, three, four. You count the sides. Well, is that all that makes it a square? The sides have to be equal, right? How do we know the sides are equal? We can measure them. And measuring is just a fast form of counting. Now, there's one other thing that makes this a square. It has right angles, angles that are 90 degrees. How do I know they're 90 degrees? I measure them, again, a fast form of counting. So we look at math as just counting and define it that way. And you will see, as you work with it, how this unifies our topic. Let's take some time now and look at some other fun things we can do with place value. I want you to get out one of the hundreds kind and five of the tens kind and three of the units kind. Okay, now look at how simple this is. Here's this number, and you know what I can do with my cards? I can pick them up, put them like this, and the child can see that that's the number 153. Some other fun things that you can do are putting these up and then asking the children, how many is this? It's three. What kind? The units. How many here? Five. What kind? Tens. And we have to put our zero there. How many here? One. And it's the hundreds kind. Now, in our books, when you see numbers written this way, you'll see them with plus signs at first. You know what? This is called expanded notation. Expanded notation. You know, when I taught seventh grade, I taught expanded notation. And we did do some other sophisticated things with it. But can you see that this way of writing our numbers, and here I've just color coded it and done it as if the blocks were out there first, this way really helps the child internalize those concepts of place value. And they can see the blocks. I could tell you story after story about children who might have had trouble with place value. And then they see the blocks, it's simple. Or a classroom where they were supposed to have 35 lessons on place value. And yet in 20 minutes, the basics were covered and the rest of the time can be spent for internalizing and going beyond. Let's leave this up here and do something else with it. We have out this many. Now, let's get out this many. Right, we need one of the tens kind and two of the units kind. Now, what happens when we put those all together? Right? We're just going to add these numbers. And let me write it the way that you're going to be seeing it with the plus signs in between. We just put it together. And what do we have? Five units. Right? How many of these? Six tens. And how many of these? 100. And the other thing we can do is, how many of these kind? Five. How many of the tens kind? Six. 
How many of the hundreds kind? One. 165. Remember what I said at first about children learning language? That they hear all these words and think about it. They don't start out by just hearing two letter words, adjectives, right? They don't start out by hearing those two letter words and then the next year or the next few months they get to three letter words and then four letter words. They get the whole smorgasbord, right? They get to hear these long words. They love to say Tyrannosaurus Rex or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as if it were one word. They love that. What do you think about these large numbers? As a small child, it gives them some sense of power to work with these large numbers. And can they do it? What was required to do this addition problem? All you have to do is be able to, yes, count. And here we are doing some problems that maybe they might have waited, you know, a little longer to do. But this is so much fun for them. Once they master these concepts, they can go to thousands, ten thousands, hundreds, and hundred thousands, and so forth, and enjoy it. Behold, in front of you, you have this really large number. It's into billions. Have you ever counted this high? Of course not, but you understand the number because you understand place value. Now, what is the largest number used there? It's a nine. In Mortensen math, in base 10, we say you never count past nine. When you have nine and you get one more, you get the next largest kind. Let's do that with our units. Picking them up, let's put them in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we never count past nine because what happens if I were to put one there it would be just the same as 10. When we have nine and we get one more, right here, one more, we have one of the next larger kind. We have 110. We can do that same thing with our tens. Let's drop these out. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. And what happens if I put one more in? That's just the same as 100. We never count past nine because when we have nine and we add one more, that gives us the next largest kind. In this case, 100. Let's use our tray and do something else. Now again, I'm starting out with it empty. With the younger children, it's nice to start out with it empty. That way there aren't a lot of distractions. I put a seven in. Can we build a seven with a six and something else? Can you find the piece that will go with the six to build seven? Of course, it's a one. And the tray is self-correcting. It's so easy for the child to succeed. Can you build a seven with a five and something else? Right, a five, and what'll go here? A two. Now, can you find a four? And what can we put with four to build seven? A three. Well, what if we start out with a three? What would we put with a three? The four. Now let's try a two. What could we put with a two? That won't work. And you know what's going to happen? The child may pick it up and start to put it there, but immediately it's very obvious. It's visually obvious. This doesn't fit. They get it close. They put it away. They've corrected themselves. Now they can build a seven with a two and a five. And what if we started out with a one? 
What would we use? Let's see. I bet this will work this time. It does. Notice that here, the child sees a 6 and a 1, a 1 and a 6. Both of them give them 7. Very important concepts for children to understand. If they have the experience first, then later when we attach fancy names such as the commutative property to that, it's going to mean a lot to them. Think about learning just about anything. I've done workshops where I talked to people before I ever went to that workshop. I was very familiar with their names. And in spite of the fact that there were 40 or 50 people at the workshop, it was very easy for me to call them by their name after just a few minutes because I could attach the name that I had heard over and over again with that face. It's a lot different from walking into a workshop and not having ever met anyone before or having it, not ever having heard their name. When we know something, then just adding a little bit more makes it easier. Also notice that I use the word build. We can build a seven with a six and a one. That's a child's language. After you say that, then you can add those words plus and equals. Note two. Let me write this. What does equals mean? Equals means the same as. Does this look the same? Now, be honest. Imagine being a young child. Does this look the same? No. But let's put the bars there. Here's a 4. Here's a 5. And here's a 9. Are they the same? Well, if we push them together, the child can see that it's the same quantity, it's the same length as, that these are the same. And you know what typically happens even before that? Children working with the blocks will discover that if they put a 2 with a 3, that's always 5. Always. It's pretty powerful when the child makes that discovery. Right now, it seems minor to us, but take the time and think. That's very powerful for the child. Now, you've played some games with addition facts. And I just gave you a sample, and I recommend that you look in your Games and Activities Manual and find some other things. And let that Games and Activities Manual be a starting point for your imagination. Here we have Addition Facts Mastery. Let's look at it. Here, we have a 1 with a 1. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. Here we have a 1 put together with a 2. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. Let's look at what the child is going to see. I'm looking at page 3 now. Here, we have a 3. The child will fill in the 3 with a 1. And the answer is already filled in there. It's a 4. Here, we see a 2 bar that we're going to get put together with a 2 bar. Now, what's going to happen when the child gets out a 2 and a 2? Have them do that. Here's a 2 bar and another 2 bar. And a 2 bar and a 2 bar is the same as a 4 bar. And if they need to do that, have them do that. You see how they're going to have a lot of fun just filling in those problems. Now, if you look at page 7, here is a sample of some missing add-ins. What do I add to 2 to get 4? Well, here's a 4. Here's a 2. What do I put with that 2 to get 4? Well, it must be a 2. And below it, we have something that we put with a 2 to get a 5. Here's our 5. Here's our 2. And what do we put with that? We put a 3. So 3 plus 2 is the same as 5. Notice that the missing number changes position. Sometimes it's over here on the right. Sometimes it's on the left, and sometimes it's in the middle. This is very important 
children with see problems like this on standardized tests. But aside from the standardized test, it really makes sure that they understand the concept of addition and that they think of the equal sign as meaning the same as. I hope you see that the child could be working in the smiley face books and working on their place value in the counting books and also beginning to work in the addition facts mastery, especially if they have those writing skills. I had out my Mortensen math blocks one day and I really started paying attention to how pretty and attractive this nine was. It's this wonderful mint green and it's so nice and tall, I started talking to it. Boy, you are such a pretty, pretty color and you're so nice and tall. It must be wonderful being a nine. You know what? The nine talked back. Yeah, it is nice being a nine. I like being tall. I'm taller than most of the other blocks. But you know what? I really, really would like to be a 10. Why would you like to be a 10? Well, I'm a unit bar. And you know, 10s are the next largest kind. I really would like to be a 10. Can you help the nine out? Let's get our tray and let's put a 10 there. Nine wants to be a? You're right. Nine wants to be a 10. What does nine need to be a 10? Nine needs a one. Ah, that's it. Nine with a one makes 10. And why does nine want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Well, I ran into an eight. I started talking to the eight. Now look, what do you see and what do you think of when you look at that eight? It's that nice chocolatey brown color. Boy, I bet you're just so happy being an eight. People must really like you. And the eight said, yeah, people do like me because I'm that chocolate color. color. And you know how many chocoholics there are in the world. Yeah, I'm pretty popular, but I really would like to be a 10. You know, nine said the same thing. Why do you want to be a 10? Because I'm a unit bar and I want to be the next largest kind. I want to be a 10. Can we help the 8 out? Here's an 8. An 8 wants to be a 10. What does 8 need to be a 10? Can you tell? It needs 2. And guess what? Do you know what 7 wants to be? Right. 7 wants to be a 10. What does 7 need to be a 10? 7 needs a 3. Yeah. Now, why did 7 want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Can you guess what 6 wants to be? You're right. I can't fool you, can I? And what does 6 need to be a 10? 6 needs a 4. Young children love this. Can you hear them giggling over this? And when you hold up the 5 and say, what does 5 want to be? There's not going to be any hesitation, right? 5 wants to be a 10. And what does 5 need to be a 10? They're seeing the pattern now. 5 needs a 5. The tray, self-correcting. And it's so easy for them to see this. Please note that I started with a 9. Now, why would I start with a 9? Because when we had that 1 missing, it's very obvious, right? The child cannot fail because that's the piece that goes there. And it's real easy for them to see that just the 1 is missing. And now we can continue on with this. Think about fun games that you can play with this want to be a 10. You can make up a shopping game. If you're working with a small group of students, hand them some pieces. So imagine that one child has this bar, another one has, oops, I want to use the positive ones, this one, another one has this, and another child has this. And they're holding it in their hands like this. You can't see it, but the child can look and see. 
Now you hold up a nine bar, right? What does the nine want to be? A 10. What does the nine need to be a 10? A one. So what is nine gonna shop for? A one. Now a child's holding this in their hand. Do you have a one? No. Another child, do you have a one? Yes. Oh, nine's found a one and nine with one make what? 10. And nine is so happy because nine with a one makes 10. Suppose that eight were out shopping. What does eight want to be? A 10. What does eight need to be a 10? A two. What's eight going to shop for? A two. What is eight looking for? A two. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Boy, I hope I can find a two soon because my feet are getting really, really tired from all the shopping. Let's check the next door. Do you have a two? Yes. Now, eights has a two. Well, an eight with a two makes what? 10. And eight is so happy with a two because that makes 10. Now, that's what you can do with a group of students. What if you're just working with one or two? Could you hide these under checkbook boxes or cups? Right, and the child can play a concentration game. Another type of game could be, let's put up the other bars. And we have to have a five twice, right? And we can cover up these bars so we uncover the five, right? I uncover it, I've got this one. Now, I take a turn, maybe I uncover this three. That's not what I want. So the next child can take a turn, or you as the adult. Let's see, let's just pick one. What if I uncovered the seven? What does seven want? A three. I remember where that three was. It was right here. And so you keep it. So with two children, with one, you can adapt this play concentration game. And another fun thing to do is have the child with all the pieces in front hold up a nine. What is the child going to hold up? Nine wants to be a ten. So from the child's stack, they go and grab a one. If I hold up a six, what, what are you going to hold up? A four. Again, let your imagination be your guide. Of course, with older children, you're going to have to make this a much more sophisticated approach. Let's look at the books and see what happens in our books at this point. This is book four of Edition Facts Mastery. And let's look at page three. Making 10. Six would like to be a 10, but it needs a four. Three would like to be a 10, but it needs a seven. It's written in, and now the child is doing it. Here, the child must identify that this is a four. Four would like to be a 10, but it needs a six. Right. Then if we look at page five, we see that the child gets to match. So here one is done for them. They're showing eight, and eight needs two. Here we have a four, and what would four need to be a 10? Four needs a six. That's this one right here, the matching context. Here we do it with the numerals. Six needs a four. Three needs a seven. And all we're doing is drawing lines. Here we have dominoes. The three is looking for the seven. I'm on page 11 now. A one is looking for a nine. We draw the line and connect it. 
We do it with dice. This is on pages 12 and 13. We do it with just numbers on the dice. And then we have pictures. Oops. We have pictures showing balloons where the child will write the number of balloons that are shown and then match it to the number needed. So you see, we're showing that these blocks can represent different items and we're practicing the want to be a 10 in lots of different ways. What does nine want to be? A 10. What does nine need to be a 10? A one. Nine's out there. Nine is looking high and nine is looking low for a one. Nine's looking and looking and you know what? Nine found a five. Does nine want a five? Does nine need a five? What does nine need? A one. Can we find a one hiding in that five? Remember when we built fives before? We found that fives could look like a one and a four, a two and a three, and we could have had those reversed, right? So if nine were to run into a five, which one of these fives would nine want? It would want this one that's made up of a one and a four, right? And what's nine going to do? Nine's going to say, come on, one, why don't you come over with me? Because, you know, together we make a great team. We make a 10. So the one comes on over with a nine. What does nine with one make? It makes 10. And what is a 10 with a four? We know it has a special name. 10 with a four makes 14. Let's write down what we did. We had a nine. And nine was out looking for a one, right? But what did that nine find? That nine found a five. This is just like the problem, nine plus five. But then, what did nine do? Nine thought about how many different ways five could be made. So which five would the nine want? It wants this one, right? And what did we do? We wrote that five as a one and a four. And then what? The one comes on over with a nine, and nine with a one makes 10. And we have four more. That makes 14. You'll see this sort of thing done in the Addition Packs Mastery computer disk. It's really fun to see those blocks moving. And this is just one section of the disk. It starts out with a simple fax. It works on the want to be a 10 concept. And then we have nine looking for a friend. And this is what happens. Well, geez, that seems like a lot of writing. But it's not when the child really understands. And the beautiful thing that happens is the child sees the blocks, they work with pictures of the blocks, and then they visualize it happening in their minds. Oops, Rowan. I've done this sort of thing with junior high and high school students. They think that they're doing slow with working on their facts. So I have them start writing down answers with the directions that they stop when they find one that slows them down that they have to think about it and circle it. You know who the culprits are. Problems like 9 plus 5, 9 plus 8, 7 plus 6. 
And then we work on those with the blocks because the blocks make it so easy. So the older children think about, here's this nine, and what does the nine do? It grabs that one. They're seeing it. Grabbing that one. This is a 10. Here's our 10. And four more makes 14. Let's look at a book and see what it looks like there. This is book five. And I've opened it to page five. And I'm going to write in it so you can see how we would do this. I'm on page five. Shows a seven. Seven is looking for a three. Seven plus three is the same as seven plus three. Ten is the same as ten. That one was easy. Let's move over to the next page. This is page seven. Nine is looking for a one. But our problem is nine plus nine. Nine plus nine, that's the same as nine. And nine can be written as a one and an eight. And the child will draw in the bars. So they will draw in the nine bar, put their marks. And over here, they're going to show that nine bar broken up as a one and an eight. But that's the same as what happens. This one comes over to the nine. That's the same as a 10 plus 8, which is the same as 18. And at first, they'll draw it. They'll mark the little divisions. But after they've done that, I mean, our goal isn't just sketching. Our goal is understanding. After they've drawn those divisions enough, then they will go on to just doing this sort of thing making a little sketch and going on from there. Now let's look at multiplication. I bet you can't guess how we define multiplication. You're right. We define it as counting. Multiplication is counting a number a number of times. As an introduction to multiplication, we start out by whisper counting. Can you whisper? One. Except what we're going to do is when we get to the very end of the bar, we're going to say that one loud. Can you whisper count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Can you do that even softer and faster? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Can you say that even softer so we can't even hear the whispered ones and faster? Three, six, nine, twelve. You see how the child is set up for learning their skip counting? That's skip counting by threes. You know, I have this dog. His name is Rover. And he and I, we play in the clover. We count clover leaves one by one. Then we count them by threes. It's a lot more fun. He goes, roof, roof, three, roof, roof, six, roof, roof, nine. Rover counts just fine. Now, we do have a tape that has those songs on them and some coloring books that have the words to the songs. But eventually, what the children can do is they listen to the songs or they're just doing things like that with you, and they can build towers, and we'll go through that in a minute, and they'll be going. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, 
18, 21, 24, 27. Then we come back. Oh, hi! You're not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for Stover. By the way, I'm Rover. I count by threes, and I'm trying to find my friend Stover. He's a cat. So we can count by threes. If you see him, let me know. Let's count. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, and try to count. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Then we count them back. Oh, hi, Stover. You want to keep counting with me? Let's do it. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Good, let's keep going.